108. All right, so now that we have um, reviewed some of the basics of cell referencing, let's take a, um, a look at another example, uh, a slightly more complex example. So this particular example, I'm going to call it class example two, is going to look at calculating uh, simple interest uh, of a, an initial principal amount. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to first create a cell called discount rate. This is an interest rate. Um, sometimes you'll hear it called discount rate. In this particular case, it's a discount rate. And I'm going to say it's equal to um, 12%. And then uh, my initial amount, let's say we have an initial inv investment. Uh, my initial amount is going to be uh, $10,000. So I just type in those two values. I hit return. And then what I'd like to do is say, okay, um, given this uh, initial amount invested in year zero, how much will it be worth um, after one year, after two years, uh, and so on, all the way out to 30 years. So I'd like to know how much an initial amount invested um, of $10,000 today is worth after 30 years time. So Excel has built into it a very nice feature called autofill. And with autofill, we can take a, a sequence, and it can be any sequence, sequence it can be numbers, it can be uh, days of the week, it can be months, uh, it can be years, it, it can really be just about anything that has a pattern. And um, Excel will uh, try and continue that pattern for as long as you specify when you uh, use the autofill. So what I mean by that is here I have a, a simple pattern, uh, year one and year two, and now I'm going to continue that pattern out to year 30. And to use autofill, um, you'll notice this lower right corner of the, of the region of Excel I have highlighted um, looks a little bit different than the rest of, of the, the, the rectangle. And if I click and hold and drag, um, you'll see it automatically starts to fill in the values for me. And so I just clicked that lower right corner. I held it. So I clicked and held. I didn't let up. And then I dragged it down. And it gave me all 30 years of data that I want to fill. So, as I mentioned, um, you can do, this works for uh, just about anything. So I can do two, four, six, oh, two, four, six, which is just a kind of a basic sequence counting by twos. I click and I hold the lower right corner. I drag. It continues to fill it for me. Um, I can do days of the week. Uh, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, click, hold, drag. Um, it's going to repeat the sequence out for me. Um, you know, January, uh, February, March. Um, it'll fill it out for me and so on. Um, so if you find yourself in Excel typing a lot of data, so just keying in data over and over again, you're probably not doing it as efficiently as possible. You could probably use autofill uh, to simplify things. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And in your Excel case, you are going to definitely need to use the autofill feature. All right, so let's go back to our um, example. And so here I am calculating or computing the example of um, an initial amount uh, invested at a certain interest rate and and so the amount that it's worth is going to increase um, every year so let's say in, in um, year one the the uh, we haven't accumulated any interest rate yet so that means our uh, value is just going to be whatever the initial amount is so here I'm just going to say our, our year one value is equal to whatever happens to be uh, in cell F4 and so again I'm not typing in 10,000 over again I'm referring to the cell itself using equals F4. I press enter or return. It gives me the value uh, that I'm interested in. In year two, we have something else going on. And this is what's going to happen for each and every year after this. We have um, the prior year's value. So in this case, it's going to be F7. And to that amount, I want to add 
any interest that has been earned in, in uh, the given year. And so the, the way we calculate the interest earned is it's just going to be um, the amount invested multiplied by my discount rate or my interest rate. Okay, so this formula has two parts. Uh, part one is the, the value in the preceding year. And then part two is the, uh, the interest we earn on, on that invested value. So we have $10,000 and to that amount, we're gonna add 10,000 times the 12% discount rate. So when I press return or enter, I, I get a, a value of 11,200. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and format the cells here to, uh, let's change it to number, use thousand separators. You know, in here really you can use currency, you can use number, uh, lots of possible um, formatting options are, are acceptable. So this looks like would be an ideal case to use the autofill. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and see if that'll work. So I have a kind of a, a sequence. And if I try and click and hold and drag, um, let's see what happens. And oh, it's uh, sure enough, it, it doesn't work as expected. So let's see what's going on. If I look at my year three formula um, to see what happened, you know, we see, all right, so the, the formula itself is going to have two parts. Uh, the first part, F8, is our prior year's amount. And then we want to take, for the second part, adding to the first part, our prior year's amount times our interest rate. But look what happened here. Excel shifted the interest rate. Instead of locking it down to F3, it shifted it to, to refer to cell F4. And this is by design. Um, Excel sometimes will uh, uh, shift the cells for you, which is what you want to have happen. And other times you want to create what's called a, a fixed or absolute cell reference. And what a fixed or absolute cell reference does is, is it locks the reference down to a given cell uh, in the worksheet. So here, no matter where I copy or fill my formula to, I always want the discount rate to be cell F3. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. So if I say F8 times um, dollar sign F dollar sign 3. So I've updated my formula and at first it looks a little bit funny. So again for, for row 8 for cell F8 my formula has two parts. I have this um, first part which is the uh, the initial value and to it, I want to add any interest that gets earned. So I have um, the amount times the interest rate. And you'll notice for each row and column, I went ahead and I put a, a dollar sign in front of the, uh, the column and the row. And what that does is it, it, is it fixes or it creates a, an absolute cell reference. So now whenever I use my autofill, um, it will automatically always refer to the correct cell. So now if I go ahead and I click down, you'll see the, the first part, in this case it's F13, refers to the prior year's amount. And then the second part is the prior year's amount times the interest rate. So what we did here is we went ahead and we fixed the interest rate reference. And so I scroll down and I can see um, my year 30 amount is 267000 Four hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Now again, um, really the the power of Excel is being able to do these what ifs, and and when I change one number, um, everything updates. You know, so here I change the discount rate from twelve to fifteen percent, and instantly yeah, I see everything changed along with it. You know, if I change my um, initial investment amount maybe from uh, $10,000 uh, to let's say $20,000, you can see what happens along the way as well. Uh, so um, a worksheet that, that seems like it would be very time consuming and complex to create, um, you know, in reality using autofill and, and the fixed and, and absolute cell references can, can uh, occur very, very quickly. Um, in your class project, in your Excel case project, 
you are asked to do a cost benefit analysis for a 30 year period. You will need to, to set up your formulas using absolute cell referencing where appropriate along with autofill uh, in, in order to uh, accomplish your task. It, it's just um, uh, much more efficient and, and a huge time saver. This concludes uh, this part of the, the tutorial uh, where we took a look at absolute cell referencing and some of the, uh, the basic features built into Excel.